and just give the Lord a clap of praise before we open in prayer. Thank you so much. Lift your hands with me as I pray. Our Father, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise your name. We thank you, Lord, that you inhabit our praise. And I just thank you, O oh Lord, that when we come in your presence, we come with thanksgiving. We come with praise. We come, with, come to worship you, O oh Lord. So, Father, we inhabit, inhabit our praise as we lift our hands. We, we commit our body. We commit our soul. We commit our spirit unto you today. Be glorified in us and through us we pray and all God's people say amen. Amen. We need to give God praise in this place today. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put those hands together.
worship you in this place today. Come on, put those hands together. Let's give them the praise. You're the joy and the song that the angels sing. Glory to my God in heaven's King. Sing your mighty name. Your mighty name.
You are worthy of all the glory, honor, and praise in this place today. We honor you, Lord. We honor you. We worship you. Let's continue to raise our voices, raise our hands, and praise to him. Jesus, we love you in this place. We do give you all the glory and honor that you deserve, Lord. We love you, Jesus.
beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. Come on, sing it out. What a beautiful name it is. See, nothing compares. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You were the word. You were the word at the beginning. One with God.
lift our hands and sing that a couple more times. you Jesus you are the king of kings you are the Lord of Lords there's no other name that matches the name of Jesus Lord we bless your name we thank you that miracles break out at the name of Jesus we worship you in this place thank you Lord why don't we just pray father we just thank you today that at the name of Jesus we know that miracles break loose so, Father, today as we've declared the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we declare that healings and signs and miracles and wonders will come because our faith receives the work of Jesus Christ and what he has done on the cross. And today we thank you that in every situation it shall bow because of the name of Jesus today. So whatever it might be, we command fear, we command hopelessness, we command, God, anything that contradicts your word to bow at the name of Jesus. And we thank you that as your children, we today have victory because you love us and care about us and we are yours. So today we declare the name of Jesus and that we have the victory in this place. In your name we pray, amen. Do you believe that today? Amen. Well, it is good that we have the name of Jesus to declare. Amen. Not in my name, not in any other name, but the name of Jesus. Well, welcome to BCF Church. We're so glad to have you here with us today. Whether it's your first, second, third time, or you come all the time and you're part of the church family, now you're all a part of the church family regardless. For those that are watching online from all over the world, we welcome you. We thank you that you're part of our church family as well. But why don't we do this? Why don't we get out of our seats? Why don't we greet one another and just express God's love in just a practical way by getting to know each other, okay?
Well, it's so great to see you today. Are you happy to be here today in church? I'm so glad. It's great to see faces coming back from vacation, and it's great. I know there's still some traveling, but we just want to welcome you today to BCF Church. If it's your first time here with us, we just want to express a special welcome. Thank you for being part of our church family and our church experience today. We pray that you will experience God in such a real way that changes your life. For those that are watching online as well, we just want to welcome you again. Thank you for joining us. If it's your first time with us as well, you can chat with us just on the right-hand side. There's a box there. Just let us know. We have someone there that will pray with you and that will be able to connect with you as well. Well, if you would do me a favor, if you would just reach into the seat pocket right in front of you is our connection card. This card here is our way to connect with you. It's our way to pray for you, rejoice in the great things God's doing in your life. And if you would just fill out the information on the front of the card, whether it's your first, second time, or you've been coming a little bit more regular, if you've changed your contact information and you moved over the summer, please let us know as well. Check that box off. Fill out the information on the front. Let us know how you heard about BCF as well. On the back of the card is an area on the bottom there that you could share any needs you have in your life and how we can join our faith and pray for you. We uh, pray for our church family and our connection cards when the staff is here throughout the week. But also, let us know how God has come through and uh, answered prayer for you as well. Would you do that kindly for us? Following the service, you'll bring that connection card. Uh, if, if it's your first time or you're uh, newer to the church family, out into the lobby where our cafe is there, we have a free gift we'd like to bless you with. Some of our team will be there to greet you. The rest of us will leave that as we exit the auditorium with our ushers. At this time, uh, Dr. Harrison has a special message on screen today for us for our family focus segment. So please draw your attention there. Thank you. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Mangal, and welcome to Family Focus. Today, I want to talk to you about holding on to that rope or keep an eye on that rope. What does that mean? You know, the last couple of weeks I've been uh, supporting individuals who have been struggling with a lot of stresses in life. You know, predominantly stresses will be relationship issues, financial issues, some are struggling with uh, investments, maybe parenting, uh, lots of different psychosocial situations that people are going through. And uh, the concept that I develop is if, if you were to be holding on to a rope at this moment, I want you to picture that you're holding on to a rope. Can you see that right now? Yeah, that rope. And as you look up, you notice that the rope is breaking. And as it's breaking, you have a choice. You have a choice to either explore all the options that is around you right now to see what, what weight can you get out of your shoulders, or you can let go. But I don't believe that we should be letting go any rope because that rope is your lifeline. And when I, when I, when I think of myself or even look at the individuals that we have been supporting, uh, one of the things I've, I've learned is that there are so many situations in our lives that we need to separate from ourselves. You know, if it's marital problems, relationship issues, if it's parenting skills, if it's uh, financial struggles, whatever the situation may be, we all have them. Would you agree with me? Absolutely. I know you would. And so when you think of that, I, I like to put them all in a package and say it's my backpack. My backpack holds all of my life stresses, regardless of what they are. And I have a choice. God has given me a choice to either let go of the backpack or keep holding on to it and using it as a crutch that I'm unable to move on. The problem is the more weight I have upon me, when I look up and I see that the string is breaking, I start getting a little bit anxious, I start getting a little bit depressed, and it start bothering me, I cannot sleep properly, it start affecting my eating habits, but I believe that God has given us the wisdom. Think about David and Goliath for a minute. You know, yeah, we say that David killed Goliath, and some of us may believe it was all God, but you know, in reality, God did not take that, that sling and sling Goliath. David had to take the sling and sling the Goliath with God's strength and God's wisdom. And that's what God wants us to do. Let go of these baggages that are holding us bondage. Just let it go and allow God to set us free so we can move on in the future. I want to leave a couple of tips with you. Tip number one is you need to analyze really what are the problems that, that us. Uh, that you're struggling with, what are the situations that you're going through right now and put it in a backpack, whatever it may be. And once, you were, once you're able to analyze that situation and put it in the backpack, the second tip I would like you to do is learn to let it go. 
Don't allow negativity, situations in life, problems that we're facing to hold us back because that rope is going to break and we're going to fall into such a depressive state of mind or feel this anxious feeling like this butterfly feeling inside of us so we feel like we cannot breathe because there is not sufficient air as we see the rope is breaking. Think about letting go of that backpack. Take every possible strength you have or get someone who you know can help you out and take that backpack out. And number three, look at the strength that you have within you, the resiliency you have within you that God has given to you so you can actually move on. Every day, confess something positive. For example, I confess today I am in control. Tomorrow I may confess that um, I'm going to let my yes be yes and my no be no. The next day I can say I can do all things through Christ who have given me the strength. The, the following day is no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And you keep building that momentum up and you're going to see victory coming your way. God bless you. Have an amazing week. And remember, let go of that bag that is full of your problems and hold on to Jesus. Amen. Let go of the problems and hold on to Jesus. That's a great opportunity for each one of us. Now, Dr. Harrison's down in, uh, where is he now? He's down in Panama right now, and I, he should be at the next church he's, they're preaching at. They had an hour's drive this morning, and uh, so I'll, I'll show you a little picture. But thank you so much for praying for the team over in South Africa. They've got on the plane to come back now, and I've got some pictures I want to show you. So this is the, uh, they did a, a nice banner for the work that was done. This is what it looked like beforehand. So this is a nursery school makeover in South Africa, just outside of Johannesburg. And you can see it's a little bit on the, the rough side to the extent they chose this one. I just found out they chose this school because the government was going to shut it down because it was in such areas of, of disrepair. And so now, after all the work, let me show you what it looks like. Doesn't that look great? So this is the protective wall around the outside, all beautified, and for, for the, uh, the actual door to go into it as well. So thank you, BCF, for caring. Now, just so you know, the, the whole package was about was $50,000 is what we had to raise for it. And, and then I came to you two weeks ago and said we're about just under 10000 short. And I checked last week, uh, midweek, and thank you so much. We went over the top. Praise God, I saw there was 142 people gave specifically just for that and put us over so we could do all the work. You can see there's uh, Carol and, and others busy working. We have good painters here, very creative. Uh, they're making fish. I saw some of them, uh, maybe I, you were on my email list, I sent out a note where they, they had painted a tree and then they got all the children in the school to put their hand paints, painted handprints on the tree as the leaves. Wasn't that a great idea? It was something for the kids that they created themselves. Now let's look at the next slide as well. Uh, the playground has totally been renewed, as you can see, brand new. And you see this little guy <laughs> down the end there? Doesn't that remind you of your kids? Okay. Big smile on his face, his dollar store sunglasses brought from Canada and his little bubble blower. So he's having fun. All the Canadian flags there and everything. So thank you so much, everyone who participated, all of you that prayed. You are part of the success there. And then down in Panama, they actually uh, decided that they, don't they look nice in those nice bright colors, okay? So small team, just guys and guys that like playing soccer. So what do you do? You challenge the local people, for local kids for a game, and they had a great match, and then they preached the gospel, and about 20 people came to Jesus after this soccer game. Isn't that fantastic? So they're going to continue. They're in churches as well, and ab actively involved doing some speaking there, not just Dr. Harrison, but some of the young guys as well. And then tomorrow, they're into two pl police platoons, to share with them as well. And then two university classes that are being taught, a radio interview, more soccer, and then fly back here to be back on Wednesday. So it's great. Please pray for them. Will you pray for them? Yeah, continue praying for them. But thank you so much for investing in young ones like this. 
Do you believe it's good to become involved in missions outside of ourselves, outside of our local area? We believe it is. It's part of our, part of our responsibilities as BCF. We really feel that, that we're not just called to our local area, but we're called to impact those outside of our area as well. Today we have a, a dear friend with us, Ted Brown. Just stand up, Ted, so they can see your face, and then we'll... Ted Brown from Regeneration Outreach Community, all right, who's here in that truck you saw outside. Did you bring some food with you today? Should we have a banquet? Anybody bring some jerk and some rice and peas or anything? No, 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 just the raw materials. Okay, I saw that. I saw some bags of rice out there, so that's good. So we want to uh, gonna do as much as we can to fill the truck up, and uh, Ted and I are going to have a conversation here in front of you in just a few moments. But I want to challenge you in the area of giving and receiving. How many like to receive from God? Okay, this section looks pretty good at that. How about the center? Do you like to receive from God? Oh, yeah, now you're into it. Young people, do you like to receive from God? woo Not very much. Okay, I understand. Because we understand that as we, uh, as we sow seed, we receive response back. We receive blessing from the Lord. So I would like to challenge you to prepare to give to the Lord today. In the seat back in front of you is a tithe and offering envelope like this. Please pull it out. If you're here for the first time today, we invite you to join us, should you choose. Just so you know, this is good ground to sow financial seed. We don't keep it all for ourselves. It's not about us. It's what we can do to impact the world around us. Every month we're giving out to nations far away, some close like Jamaica and other areas in the Caribbean, some further away is in Kenya. A pastor in Kenya connected with me yesterday and said, There's a, I would really love to go to this conference in, um, where was it, Uganda, in Kampala, Uganda. And he said, I said, when is it? He says, it's uh, next week, Monday. I said, why did you wait so long to tell me well, you were bit, I, I figured you were busy in the team. No, no, I said, you need to give us a head, heads up. So I said, okay, you raise half and we'll raise half and we'll pay. So, so we're trying to help others around the world to be able to be enriched, blessed, and then really uh, do God's will right where they are. Keep praying for them over in India. Uh, I'm going to be, Jill and I are going to be with Pastor David uh, at the end of this month. He was not able to come here, but we're going to connect with him uh, in Western Canada for a few days and be able to spend some time with them. They're doing a great job over there, but there's much persecution in that nation right now. So you pray for those uh, really in, uh, in troubled places. But let's, uh, let's give to the Lord. Uh, easy way to do that, if you're writing a check, just use the initials BCF. If you'd like to give with debit or credit, you can put it on the card, but most people prefer using our point of sale machine out in the foyer afterward. My easiest way is the text to give. And so there's opportunity there. And I would encourage you, let's, let's prepare our giving. And we'll give you just a moment. You'll notice there's some categories on the text to give. And we've even added Regen on there so that if you want to give regularly to uh, reach people out in the community that are in need, there's opportunity to do that. So I'll let you listen to the pretty music while we prepare. finished? Let's lift our offering up to the Lord. See, we don't come to do anything by accident, do we? We come intentionally to present our gifts to Him. So, Father, thank you for the privilege of being able to receive from you and then to be able to bless others by giving it back. So, Lord, receive this portion of what you put in our hands. 
We ask that you multiply it to accomplish much more than the dollar figure would indicate. And then, Lord, bless your people that give as well. If there's one or two here that don't have opportunity to give, they just don't have it in their hands. We pray, Lord, that you'd put finances in their hands this week, that they reserve a first portion to bring back to you. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers, would you please serve us? Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, people, everyone, for your generous gifts. How many of you would like to go to Africa? Not today. An another day. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll, we'll try to make opportunity. How many would like to go to India? All right. Good. Good. Great. How many want to go home and have lunch? Put your hands down. All right. We'll do that in just a little while. <laughs> well, I mentioned uh, Ted Brown is here. He's the CEO of uh, Regeneration Outreach Community that are doing a fantastic job in Brampton. We've been partnering together for many years. Would you put your hands together, please, as we invite Ted to come? Thank you. Praise the Lord. We've been talking about neighboring, okay? How to be a good neighbor to those around, how to actively do it. And Ted's doing a, a fantastic job at that. My friend, have a seat, please. Thank you. So we thought we'd have a little conversation instead of uh, just preaching God's word, but bring God's word in very practical ways. So, so Ted, why don't you tell us a little bit about Regen, uh, who you are, how long it's been around, that kind of thing. Well, Regeneration ha is celebrating its 20th anniversary this wow, year, believe it or not. Great, great, uh, charitable great. status 20 years ago, wow, and we excellent. actually have a celebration happening on the 14th of September uh, for, for an open house. Uh, Regen serves people in the downtown core of Brampton. We're just two blocks away from City Hall. Uh, we uh, serve in a church uh, that has leased space to us, uh, Grace United Church. And we serve those who are living in extreme poverty and those who are uh, homeless that find themselves uh, wanting in life. And, uh, and, and part of what we do is bring a lot of support services around those people. Fantastic. How many have been down to uh, Regen? Oh, just a few. Okay, very good. Good. Thank you. Our staff actually went down there a couple times to be able to serve. And it was uh, just a real positive experience. Tell us a little about uh, everything you do. Yeah. So the big program that we do is 365 days a year, we serve breakfast. And uh, on average, we serve anywhere from 120 to 150 uh, wow. breakfasts every morning. Uh, we have people coming in and we have a lot of support services around uh, at that time of day uh, to help people who are in need. One of the growing populations that we, we are also serving is pensioners who are living on old age security in Canada pension and have enough to pay for rent and that's about it. And so we have a number of, of uh, pensioners coming through the doors as well. Uh, some of the programs that we have uh, running throughout the week is we have a medical clinic uh, that we run and in that medical clinic we have chiropractors that come in and serve every Friday, uh, treating people uh, for back issues. Uh, we have a nurse practitioner that comes in once a week and is able to prescribe medication for those uh, in need. We have a registered nurse who helps with clinical foot care, and we help people around the issues of hepatitis C. Uh, we do blood testing, not regen, but professionals coming in, uh, doing blood testing, and then putting people in touch with support services around there. We have a housing worker on staff uh, as well, and 
one of the critical issues that we have here in here in the uh, city of Brampton is there is a tremendous lack of uh, affordable housing. It's great to see your project in the ground now. But one of the things is that there's 0% vacancy rate here in the city. And unless you're on top of ads that go into the newspaper, you lose that opportunity. You have to literally be watching and scanning uh, scanning for, for rooms that come for rent and that kind of thing. Uh, it's very discouraging, and that's one of the matters of prayer that you could, you could be praying for us, for, for our staff, because it does get very discouraging trying to get people housed. Um, because you know, as soon as you call, the room's already been rented. Uh, we are fortunate enough to have over 15 people get housed in the past year and a bit, and uh, we're very thankful for that. We also have a lot of, uh, we do what's called wraparound services, and so uh, we have different agencies that come in. They love to come into our place because of the way that we treat people. Uh, you're going to hear in the message about, do, you know, last week I think the message was do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And, and that's the way that we uh, operate our organization. Part of my philosophy that we've been able to uh, drill down in with, with our staff and even our volunteers is we want that very thing. We want to treat our guests coming into our house as they were coming into our own home. The meals that we serve, we want to be, I want to be willing to serve that to my guests anytime coming into my home. And the way that we're treating people is the same way. We treat them with love. We have, a, we have one of our mottos is serving with love. And, and that's what we want our folks, our volunteers, our staff to do. And even agencies coming in, they know that that's how we want people treated. And we will not let agencies that come in that don't treat people that way. And so it, it really becomes a, a big wraparound service that we do for folks. Fantastic. I was reading uh, just off your website, it, it gives the... Uh Kind of a mission statement, regeneration is a caring community that continually strives to provide dignity for those in need as an expression of Christian love in action. We serve those living in extreme poverty and homelessness by meeting their physical and spiritual needs. How, how do you get the spiritual side of things in there? So there, there are several things that we do uh, around that. Every morning, Monday to Friday, we actually, the, the church has given permission to use their sanctuary, and we open up, and we actually play uh, scripture every Monday to Friday for about 15 minutes. We, we basically are reading through the Bible with folks, so people can drop in, they can stay for a few minutes, so instilling, you know, some scripture into their lives. We have some that are there every day. We end that time with prayer. And, uh, and then on Fridays, we do a fellowship time where we open up, again, the sanctuary and have a service with worship and a word and then prayer ending. The other thing that we constantly do, and all of our staff are, are you know, ready, willing, and able to, if there's an issue, can we pray with you? So that prayer might happen out on the, on the steps of the church in front. It might happen in a hallway. It might happen in the fellowship hall where we serve the meals. But we're ready, willing, and able to pray with people as they have need. One of the quick stories around that is there was a guy by the name of Jimmy. And, and I prayed with him, I think it was about four or five years ago now. And we were right, I can remember right this spot we did that on the sidewalk out front of the church. And he, he wanted help with his addiction to marijuana is, you know, I really want to stop smoking pot. And, and so I, I said, can I pray with you, Jimmy? And I, I prayed with him, and then all of a sudden he's like, he's shaking. He says, did you feel that? And I, I was like, no, I didn't feel anything. <laughs> and, and, and he came back to me months later. He said, you know that prayer that you prayed? He says, I haven't touched pot since then. And so we're really thankful that we're able to help him. And, and he made the comment, I have so much money now. <laughs> it's about changing lives. And it's about being like Jesus to the people around you. Does Jesus love everyone the same? He actually does, doesn't he? And just some of us are in different situations. And by the grace of God, we're where we are. Tell us some of the new things that you've got going ahead. So th there's a few projects that we're working on. One is, and, and I'll just touch on it briefly, is around housing. 
we have been doing research and have had consultants in to help us with housing. It is a critical need, and we believe that God's leading us into that. Right. The second thing that we have going on is the start of a thrift store. Uh, we, we are wanting to get away from reliance on government sources of income. Uh, we're very thankful for churches like BCF coming and supporting us and other churches as well and businesses, but the reliance on government because changes happen with government and so does the funding. So we launched into a research project around thrift stores and we actually are launching a, our thrift store on August the 30th. We've been working on it all summer long. Uh, the big reason for the thrift store isn't just to create another thrift store in Brampton, but it's about supporting the needs of people in downtown Brampton with the people that we're serving in extreme, po living in extreme poverty. So as you, you know, we've, we've got a, a, a bookmark kind of thing out on the table out there. And so there's three things. There's, there's about shopping at the thrift store, there's donating to the thrift store, and there is also serving as a volunteer at the thrift store. And the purpose behind that, you heard the pastor talk about our, our, our purpose. The purpose behind the thrift store is to be able to fund our purposes in helping people in extreme poverty. And so we can really use your help. Uh, you can go to our website. Um, we have two websites now. Our Regen Thrift Store is regenthrift.com, R-E-G-E-N thrift.com. You can see all the information there. You can grab one of these. It gives you all the information uh, about how you can be engaged with us. And then uh, our, our website as well is regenbrampton.com. And so all of our information about our programs and how you can volunteer is there as well. What's that website again? Regenbrampton.com. Okay, so check it up, uh, bookmark it, let others know. But I, I found uh, some stuff. Um, I just upgraded my winter jacket, and uh, this one is still in great shape. Just had it clean. You like winter jackets down Absolutely. there? Absolutely. Okay, so how many have a winter jacket that you may not be wearing this year? Okay. Not that you're not wearing it yet, but you don't plan on wearing it this year. So you can bring that out. Jill helped me out, and she picked a few things, and then I doubled it up. I went, I went to my closet yesterday, and I got inspired. And I went through, and I found uh, two suits and a couple sports jackets that, that uh, I, I don't love as much as I once did. They're still in great shape. Uh, I even found some clothes that... Um, <clears throat> I bought and are still brand new, but I, I bought them in faith, expecting to grow, out of, grow into them, and I haven't exercised my faith as well as I thought I would. I, I took two inches off the waist uh, of what I normally wear, and that's what I bought. How many have ever bought faith clothes? Can I see your hands? Come on. Tell me the truth now. All right, all right. And so I found that instead of me keeping my faith and eating the way that I eat, I'm better to find them and put them in, uh, in a bag and, uh, and let somebody else get the benefit of them. So what about you? Uh, do you have some clothes in your closet that maybe you don't love as much as you once did? Or maybe you bought them when you were just the perfect size and now you're a different perfect size. Okay, and you've lost your weight and all those things, and now they don't fit any longer. Guess what? There are other people that are the size you either want to be or were. Okay? And uh, so I got some shoes there. I, w I bought these shoes, and I really liked them so much, and I wore them twice. And after I wore them a couple of times, I didn't like them anymore. And so they're brand new, but they've been sitting in my closet for a year. I'm sure none of you are like me. But guess what? We can bring, we can help others with what we have. And I found this, that when you sow what's good for you, like you could wear it. So it's, I, I, we, we don't want you having holy clothes that you give away. And let me say that again. No holes in the clothes that you give away. Just good things that you would normally wear, all right? And then don't, you don't have to bring them here you, they can actually bring them down there, is that right? That's right. Our, our thrift store hours right now are Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. 
You can bring things there and drop them off. And then Thursdays from noon till 8 p.m. Okay. And it's 253 Queen Street East. What was that again? 253 Queen Street East between Rutherford and Hanson. Okay, between Rutherford and Hanson. And, and that's where you can bring things. Hours. So uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, or, yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, or yeah, Friday, Saturday, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., and then uh, Thursdays from noon till, uh, till 8 o'clock. Okay. Then the, the hours will change coming into September. We have our grand opening, which we invite you to, on Friday, uh, August the 30th at 9 p.m. We're going to do a big ribbon cutting, and we would love to have you there. Isn't that fantastic? So the 30th is just, just back to school is the second. So we, we have our back to school prayer here on the first. So just before that, Preparing. So all of the clothes. Now, if you have children that have grown up, you don't need to hold on to their old clothes when they were younger. And imagine them as little boys and girls. You can bring the clothes in, and there'll be lots of children that will need those clothes bef between now and when school starts. So uh, what I heard was, if you work during the day and you're busy during the day, then Thursday night until 8, and throughout the day on Saturday until 3. So plan, how many will plan for that? Okay, I'm going to ask you again. How many are going to go home today and, and get in your closet? And Now, I'm going to look for you next week and ask you. You don't have to bring things. You can send me pictures if you want, but you don't have to bring them. No next-to-skin items, okay? No, no, no T-shirt, no underwear. Keep your used underwear, okay? <laughs> Unless you buy new stuff, then it's okay. But we, we have to do things orderly and what Jesus would be, appreciate. Jesus doesn't want you to underwear. No, I, like we have to be s straight about this because in the past, people looked and I'm, I'm just giving something, it's good. Do you know what they used to do? In fact, some are still doing this. They would dry out the tea bags after they used them and send them to Africa. They send them to us. And send them to you as well? Dried out tea bags because you know there's another cup of tea in there. No, no, I'm serious. This is what happens. So BCF will not be that way. We will do our best. Amen? So stretch your hands out towards Ted, please. Father, thank you so much for, for Ted's uh, just generosity of time to be here with us today and not be with his family, but also, Lord, for his heart to serve you while serving others. So, Lord, continue to bless him and those around him. Bring in the right people, the right volunteers, the right staff, the right partners to him, we ask. We call in the resources necessary to fulfill the call of God upon his life and those there at Regen. And we ask you, Father, to meet many, many needs, even throughout this week, Lord. We pray you surprise him with a blessing in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Let me put my clothes back over here. No, I'll put them this way. If you're cold, Anita, you can put that on, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is heavy. Just let one of the... Let, let do, 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 do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, don't you wish you brought your clothes with you today? How many brought food with you today? Come on, help me out. Oh, lots of hands in the air. If you did not do that, you can take that food down to that same location throughout the week and, and just bless. Didn't mention too much, but their food bank actually supplies many others throughout the area. When, when God's people are generous, God spurs on others. I was talking to Pastor Rick in, Saint, in uh, Windsor uh, yesterday. He said there's so much food produce coming into their food bank there that they have to find places for it. All their, it's stocked up. They're getting pallets and pallets of tomatoes and cucumbers and other fresh, uh, it's actually fruit, I guess, fresh vegetables down there that they have to just give away because it's going to go bad if they don't. So often on a Sunday morning, their church comes and is blessed when they leave. I know you want to move to Windsor now. Okay, let's get our Bibles out and let's look at the Word of God. We're going to baptize a couple here this morning. Hallelujah. Looking forward to that as well. But we're going to go into Matthew chapter 25. So turn on your Bible, please. 
Flip over to Matthew chapter 25. I'll remind you where we are. We're talking about neighboring, being a neighbor. The active word, the verb that we're actually living out the the life of a neighbor that cares for someone else, is willing to get involved in their life. We started off with uh, looking at the Good Samaritan, and and Mao, he impressed us so much that he went cross-cultural. He was one looked down upon by others, and yet he was the one that rose up more than the religious folks did. And so we learned lessons from there to look with the eyes of compassion, to see like Jesus saw, to actually get actively involved, and then to be willing to to give of what God has put in our hands to bless somebody else, to help others. And then last week, we talked a little bit more about the golden rule. What's the golden rule? Do unto others as you would have others do to you. Some people think the golden rule is when you have the gold, you get to rule. And they think they can be a boss and boss other people around just because they have stuff. But it's just the opposite in the kingdom of God, isn't it? It's where we actually give out of what God has put in our hands. And we do it with an open and generous heart. So we learn many things. But look down to verse 31. And let me start reading there for you and with you. And we'll look at this. Now, the context of this, of course, is this was just before Jesus was taken Uh, just before the Last Supper. It was one day before the Last Supper. And so here we are. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. It says this, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he'll sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. He'll separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep and his goats. Did you catch that? God looks at and he separates based on criteria. When many people read these, these verses, and it talks about the sheep nations and goat nations, you know what they think of? They think that this is how the nations of the world have treated the nation of Israel, God's people. And so I'm so happy that in Canada, we've been one of the few nations that have stood up for Israel in this day. They, they, The politics around us are such that they look at every little thing that's done there and they put Israel down. But God lifts Israel up as a special people that he's chosen. Imagine what would happen if somebody kept firing rockets into Canada. Would we say, oh, just they'll stop eventually. Don't do that. Stand at the border. No, we would do something as well. So when I was in Israel and I saw that, then I started to understand more deeply on how God is working in his people and how he looks for our nation to stand up for Israel as well. So when you consider voting this fall, look for candidates that will stand up for Israel, not just for Canada. Amen? Okay, you weren't sure about that. We will talk more about this. All the nations gather before him, sheep and goats, verse 33. And he will set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. How many expect to be there? You expect to be on the sheep side? Fantastic. Now comes the criteria. I love this. <laughs> Four. So, so let me read it together because when this was written, there was no paragraph. There was no verses. It was all one discourse. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will will answer him and say, Lord, when did when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did you when did we see you as a stranger and take you in or naked and, and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? Have you read this before? Do you understand what Jesus is saying? He's saying there's criteria of what I expect out of my people. 
I love that he sees us as his body. We are his hands on planet earth. Is that true? We are his feet. We are the mouthpiece. We are the ones that demonstrate to those around us the life of Jesus Christ himself. If we don't do it, nobody else does it. It's up to you, my friend, as a a, a child of God, to live in a way that touches the lives of others. That's what Jesus was saying. He was saying when we, well, he, he, he answers the question here. Verse 40, and the king will answer and say to them, assuredly, why don't you say, is it on the screen? Say it out loud with me. Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Father, help these words be imprinted on our hearts. Help us to recognize you're speaking to us individually and you're speaking to us collectively today. We receive it in Jesus' name. So what was he saying? We have responsibility, not just to ourselves, not just to touch those around us that are the same as us, but to understand that some people have greater needs than we have. And we then should not look on their needs with disdain or judgment. Is it, is it tempting to look at people that may not have a job, that may have some uh, uh, challenges uh, emotionally, uh, mentally perhaps, that may be living in a very difficult situation, maybe even on the street? Is it possible, is it tempting for us to look at them and say, get a job. You shouldn't be like that. You shouldn't do that. Why are you not taking responsibility to your life? I, I'm talking to you. When you drive up to, to the stop sign or the, the, the light uh, coming off the, four, the 410, and you drive up and there's somebody there walking with their, with their cup. What goes through your mind? Do the words of Jesus go through your mind? Every week, we have a memory verse. And our memory verse is not the one I already read. It's down further. Look down at verse 45. It says this, then he, again, the king, Jesus, will answer them saying, assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Is that sobering for you to consider? It doesn't mean we didn't have the opportunity. We always have the opportunity to touch the lives of others that are in need. We just don't always look to see the opportunities. Brother Ted, you've mentioned it to us. Every day of the year, serving breakfast there. And, and you have volunteers that come in every day. And so that means some people have seen the issue and partnered with somebody already doing something and said, okay, I can do one day a, a week, maybe a Saturday or Sunday morning. What time do you finish on Sunday morning? You start at... You start at 7 for breakfast and done by 9.30. All of you here, all of us here could have gone there and done that first shift before we come here and worship Jesus. We could have gone and actually touched people and sat down with them and just talked a little bit and served them before we come here and receive from the Lord. Do you think that would ever please the Lord if we did that? See, now you need to register on, online so that, because so, you need to know those that are working with you, as, as Brother Ted said. And then you, we, if we all came, there'll be too many of us. So you need to fit into a schedule. I understand all those technical things, but could you do once a year? Maybe as a family, go once a year and do that. Now we have 300 people here today, 300 adults in the room. If we did that once a year, you'd have another family almost every day of the year. Would that make a difference for you? So. It's not about us doing everything. It's about saying, can I do something? What can I do? Instead of right over the top of my head, never think about it again. And so, friends, God's speaking to us today to, uh, to please him in all that we do, to honor him in ways that are practical, 
realistic and attainable for every one of us. So, so I want to give you just a couple points to remember today. I know some of you take notes. My, my first point is this. God watches what we do. How many believe God watches what we do? So the, the response to that is we need to be a doer. If he watches what we do and he sees what we do, then we need to do something. Not just have wonderful plans and intentions, but actually do it. Pull the trigger. Actually do what we feel would please the Lord. It's so easy to get busy with other things. But Jesus, uh, I think I read it last week. Here, let me read again. James chapter 1, verse 25. He who looks into the perfect law of liberty, that's God's word concerning how we're to live and please him, and continues in it. Did you catch that? Doesn't mean we just read it. Continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer. So easy to forget. But a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in all he does, what he does. So I, I see people from all different aspects of society here. Some of you are busy in professions that, that uh, are far above others. Others are, are what would be called a blue-collar worker and, and busy working away with your hands and, and your skills. Uh, others are involved in school. All different aspects of life here. Guess what? God looks at us all the same. One is not higher and one is not lower. The same as those ones that we have opportunity to serve. None of those are lower than us. They're all children of God created in his image that he loves desperately and are in a situations for who knows why, a multitude of reasons. It's not our job to judge. It's our job to serve. And so thank you for bringing food in today. I really appreciate it. And you can bring it in other times here. Many have said, Where, where's your food bank? We don't have room here for a food bank nor do we have constituency to hand it out here as a food bank. But we partner with people we trust, like Brother Ted and his team there, and then we just, we transfer it there, and we're able to do that. So if you can do that directly, we appreciate that. Again, how many are taking clothes there this week? Oh, some of you forgot already. If you need me to come over to your closet, just let me know, and I'm happy to come. I, you don't need to feed me or anything. I'll just come, and I'll bring the biggest bag I have, and I will help you. Praise the Lord. So no problem. If you need others, maybe Pastor Reed may have some time just to go out, and we'll just come by your house and, and bless you and make it lighter. Hallelujah. So God's watching. He's looking for those that are doers of the word of God, not hearers only. So what do we need to do? We need to, do, we need to know the word of God. We need to read the Bible. Is that simple? That's where it starts, isn't it? Why? Because that shows the personality of God. It shows the practices of Jesus Christ. It shows how he wants us to prioritize our lives as well. And then continue in it. Let, let God's word not be for Sundays, but let it be for every day of the week. When he, when he talks about bless those that curse you, then it doesn't matter what somebody does. You still want to honor them and bless them. As you know, I send an email out to just under 500 people every morning, and I've been getting some responses back. Thank you so much for telling me what you've been doing, and some uh, feeding people, some, some uh, taking food to, to a neighbor, uh, some driving somebody to an appointment, others taking water to their, their trash man, and, and others that come. You see, like the garbage guy comes by every, every week, and everybody looks forward to them coming. In fact, they put something out for them. But they don't put out anything that he would enjoy. But some of our friends take out a cold water to them and maybe a little snack to them. Do you think that's a blessing to them? But it's so simple. Any one of us could do that if we happen to be home. Or they, we could pretend it's Christmas Eve and put it out on a nice little stand with cookies and a glass of, no, not milk. So there's all kinds of things we can do. Thank you for doing what you're doing. And then don't forget about what God says. 
Don't just remember Saturday night before Sunday morning and then forget Sunday night before Monday morning. All week long, let's serve the Lord and demonstrate his love to those around us. How many are born again here? Can I see your hands? If that means the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Is that right? Therefore, the fruit of the Spirit, love, help me out, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, all of those in our favorite one, self-control. All of those are inside of us. So then God's looking for us to live that out and touch the people around us, to impact the lives of people around us in very practical ways. That's what our friends did going to South Africa. They impacted that area. But guess what? As Jill's telling me, as they did, they said, who can we get to come with us another time? I know this person's going to want to come, and that person's going to want to come. They, they were imagining how they could come back and how they could raise some funds to be able to help another school and, and feed the children for a whole year. Isn't that 97 children feeding for a whole year, right? And, and all of those things. Because when you touch people's lives with God's love, you want to do it some more. It, it becomes something that, that is addictive that you just want to bless people. Is that right? Have you found that out? And then not only that, it's also contagious. And, and so my, my second point is this. God challenges us to motivate others to love and good works. What kind of, what motivates you? Why did you give your heart to Jesus? Somebody shout out. Was it because of God's love? Okay, or was it because of you didn't want to go to hell? Okay, how many didn't want to go to hell? No, 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 let, let, me, let me start now. I know nobody wants to go to hell, so, so that's not my point. There's a motivator, and the motivator either, either is the carrot or the stick. The carrot on a, on a stick in front of a donkey pulling a cart, and the donkey loves carrots, so he follows the carrot that always stays in front and goes where he wants to go. But if the donkey isn't as hungry as he needs to be, there's a stick in the other hand to help the donkey. I told them in the, the, to, to gently tap the south end of the northbound donkey, all right, to move him along. And so what motivated you to come to Christ? Was it the carrot, the love of God? How many say yes? Or was it the, 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 uh, the stick that says there's consequences if you don't come to Christ? Well, we have some of both. So God understands the way we work. Now, how can you motivate someone else? First of all, why, what motivates you to help others? Is it because you love God that you want to help others? Or is it because you love others that you want to help others? Brother Ted, you love the people that you serve. It, it's evident in all that you say. We don't know them like you do. So we see the exterior. You see the interior. You see the character uh, the, the, the traits inside of them that God is working on, we may see the exterior. So that's where we need to use our faith to see people the way God sees them. And as we do, the love of God grows up inside of them, and now we want to help them. We're not there to judge. We're there to lift up and allow God to do his great work inside of each and every one of us. None of us are different than them. We're just in different circumstances and different situations. And so God helps us. So then how can you motivate others onto love and good works? Well, I tried that today by bringing in my stuff. And I, I'm only one guy. This isn't Jill's. I did not use my faith on her side of the closet. Don't do that, guys. You'll get yourself in trouble. So I expect she's going to demonstrate her own faith one day. But I did that so that you could have something tangible that you can see, just, just somebody like me, that I've got a few things that I can bring. I got 10 shirts that I don't need, that I, that, that I can give there. And I, guess what? I will still come with a shirt every day. No problem. I think you've got extras as well. So then I want to motivate you. Now, what can you do to motivate someone else? Brother Jason, you know, you have a neighborhood. He, he lives in a little keyhole crescent, and, and they're all knowing each other around there. And so when you did the, the bounce house and everything for Halloween, then all the neighbors got involved in that, right? So there's things you can do to, to touch your neighbors. This is something I found. 
Many people, even ones that don't know Jesus personally, love to help others. And I know of groups that said, uh, Christmas is coming. We're, before we have our Christmas dinner, we're going to go serve people in the community that don't have Christmas dinner. And, so, and they rallied their whole keyhole crescent, their whole neighbors, to get involved, even though none of them went to church except one. So you can have a good reputation with those around you and use that reputation to spur others, stir up others to love and good works as well. But they'll need you to come with them. Does that sound like a great idea? So there's lots of things that God wants us to do, but above all, remember our memory verse? If you don't do it, Jesus is still watching. And we cannot hide from him. I'm not here to bring guilt. I'm here to bring opportunities to you today. Can we pray? Father, thank you so much for helping us today. Thank you for Ted. Thank you for the whole team at Regen and all the value they add in our community of Brampton and surrounding area. Thank you, Father, for the way they are actively involved, touching so many lives. Help us to do our part for them, I pray. But now, Lord, for each and every one here, help us to surrender our agenda to you, our will to you, our desires to you. Help us to be intentional, not just to wait till you speak to us, because you've already spoken to us through your word. Now, Lord, open our eyes that we see the opportunities and help us to step into them so that you get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Look up at me for a minute. I'm going to slip out. Pastor Jay's going to come uh, and tell us a little bit more. Maybe Jason, there you are. You can uh, go through some of these next steps. Uh, I'm going to get ready to baptize. Well, thank you, Pastor Randy, and thank you, Ted, as well. Just want to remind you of just a few things that as we are uh, believers, we live our life in action. And uh, just want to encourage all of our prime timers, 55 and over. Uh, Pastor Reed is going to be leading an iPad uh, training a uh, few days. August 27th um, is the first date uh, on there. And uh, there's a number of dates. There's flyers out in the lobby. You do need to register in advance so that we can make sure there's enough room for you. So that's for all of our prime timers. It doesn't have to be uh, just our church family. So we want to encourage you to please invite friends in the community that you know that need iPad training. How many of you know that, how many of you might need some iPad training or know someone? All right. It's, it's going to be really, really fun. As well, following the service as well, uh, Ted is going to be out in the lobby area. He has a table he has fridge magnets and, and cards there to remind you of the website so that you can connect if you like to volunteer, if you'd like to be involved in serving and being a, a, just a part of what Regen is doing. I've been there to serve breakfast as well and have been there on other occasions. It's tremendous just to sit. You shared the stories of just sitting with the guest uh, there. Uh, they call them guests. Uh, and that's what I really love. People feel really, really valued. And if you would just hear the stories it's just tremendous uh, how people's lives are being impacted. So please make sure you see Ted out in the lobby there. There's his, his truck. Um, for our first-time guests um, that are here today, some of our pastors and leaders want to be able to greet you and meet you out in the lobby. Please bring your connection card with you. Out in the lobby, we have a free gift that we'd like to bless you with as well. And uh, we'll just take a few moments with you. Um, for the rest of us, if you'd like to give your tithe or your offering via credit card or debit, our kiosk will be open in the lobby as well. So please make sure that you do that. And men, I'm going to remind you twice. I'm going to remind you, don't, men, we need all the men to please help us stack the chairs in nine and take down the stage as well. It's great when we're seeing 60 to 100 young people here every single Saturday for our Heroes Camp basketball and dance program. So we do things with purpose. Amen. We live our lives with purpose as well. So I want to encourage you uh, today to prayerfully consider uh, for the rest of us, even on our connection card, that you'll commit to memory, Matthew 25, uh, chapter 25, verse 45. Uh, bring new clothing to, uh, to Regeneration's new thrift store. Just in case people didn't know, it's the old Sears clearance warehouse that's just between 
uh, Hanson and the uh, 401 or the 410. Not the big building and the no frills, a little bit further where the stitches is at, actually right there. So just want to encourage you. It's the old Sears clearance that you can drop off your food, uh, your food items there and your clothing as well. Is that okay if you do that? Well, I want to invite our, uh, our, our baptismal uh, people getting baptized today to please come up. Why don't we give them a hand as they come up? It's an exciting step for them. So you take a step of obedience. Krishana, how are you? Why don't you tell us how Jesus, or when you accepted Jesus, and how he has changed your life? So I grew up in a church, so I was always a believer. And uh, I would say about a year ago, I started... Uh, going through a lot of trials, a lot of obstacles. I didn't understand what was happening. Um, I kept asking, why me? Uh, but uh, God revealed to me uh, throughout my faith, uh, priors, that he wants me to come to him. And that's what I've been doing, foc focusing on my faith, focusing on Christ, uh, getting closer to him. I know I'm not perfect, <laughs> but I said, regardless of the fact that I'm not perfect, I want to be better each day and uh, live for Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes. Sorry. I need to know. And then we have Vaughn as well. Vaughn, why don't you share a little bit uh, how you came to your faith in Christ, how you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and the change that he's made in your life? Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my wife invited me to this church. But we, <laughs> uh, we both grew up in church back in our home country, uh, yes. Jamaica. Yeah. Yes, so we have been going to church when we were very little. Amen. And what is the difference Jesus has made in your life today? Well, well he, he allowed me to have self-control in everything that I do. Amen. Jesus helps us in every area of our life. Amen? And self-control. Well, why don't you actually... Do you guys want to be baptized? you want to be in the tank together? And we'll do you one at a time? Man first. Why don't you go in, Vaughn? No problem. <laughs> All right. So you're going to serve Jesus all the rest of your days? That's good. That's a good thing to do, isn't it? Did it bring more peace in the household? Yes, it did. Hallelujah. <laughs> we know that, don't we? Okay, so I'm going to baptize you, and then you're going to stay here and help me, and we're going to baptize your wife. Does that okay. sound like a good deal? Good okay, great. So, Father, I thank you so much for my dear friend. And now, in the name, you, you've heard his testimony, Father. We've all heard it. And now we baptize him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am free. the reality uh, of a young couple like this, uh, trusting Jesus. It's so easy to be raised in the church and then get busy with life and sometimes allow compromise to come in, all those things. But then when you make your decision solid to come back, it makes all the difference in the world. And that's what I heard. And that's what I heard from you, my friend. Don't you like their smiles? Aren't they <laughs> such nice smiles? Wow. So now, Father, I thank you so much, my dear sister. And now we just baptize her in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am free. Why don't we stand as we just close with this song, and I'll pray for you in a moment. No more shackles, Sing it. no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage.
I want to remind you, if you would like to be water baptized, just write on the back of your connection card that you'd like to be water baptized. We'll make sure that we add you and get that done next month. As well, as you exit, our kiosks are open for your tithe and your offering via credit or debit. Men, we're going to need you to please make sure that the chairs, the stack nine again, and the stage as well. Why don't we just pray for you? Can we just lift our hands as just a sign of surrender and a way of readiness that we're going to live out what we've heard today. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to hear the good work that you're doing through Regeneration uh, Outreach and through Ted and his wonderful team there. Help us to not just be hearers of the word today, but to be doers of the word. So this week, God, as we go through our closets to, to gather clothing, and as we consider, prayerfully consider, to volunteer and to be a part of this wonderful uh, ministry, reaching others in our community, help us to serve others with love and help us to see others the way that you see them and not judge them. God, so we thank you for gathering us here together. Help us to live the life of Jesus wherever we go, in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces, our schools, and God, to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. We bless you this week. Have a wonderful time reaching others.